What's up guys, back with another educational video. But first, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. We sacrifice for the algorithm. So this week we're talking about a new study that came out examining all-cause mortality in relation to protein intake in people with chronic kidney disease. Now, to give some background, for a long time, it was theorized that high protein diets could lead to kidney disease. And the idea behind this was that protein is a nitrogen containing nutrient. It is the only nitrogen containing nutrient that we consume. And in order to dispose of the amine group on amino acids, which is what they get the name amino from, is from the amine group, it basically is an ammonia group. So you have to dispose of it. And ammonia is toxic. Now, before you guys go crazy, you don't just have ammonia floating around in your bloodstream. It's converted to a molecule called urea. And urea is non-toxic and is eliminated by the kidneys. Now, it's been hypothesized by many over the years that if you were consuming a high protein diet and you had to generate a lot of urea, that it would actually cause you to uh, have kidney damage over time and possibly contribute to kidney disease. That myth has been largely debunked. In fact, there was a recent systematic review and meta-analyses, I believe it was by Stu Phillips, that demonstrated that protein does not harm a healthy kidney. There's absolutely no human evidence in randomized controlled trials demonstrating that protein or high protein diets harm healthy kidneys. So anybody who says that and claims that is making a false claim and they're pretty much operating off of theory that's like 50 years old. At this point, it's dogma. It's been thoroughly debunked. That being said, low protein diets are still something that are recommended for people with kidney disease. Again, the idea being that, well, if there is damage to the kidney, if the kidneys are compromised, we want to reduce the load on the kidneys and we're going to do that by reducing the consumption of protein to reduce urea. Interestingly, there's actually not a lot of good data suggesting that this actually reduces mortality in people who have chronic kidney disease. And there's some studies showing one thing, some studies showing another. So this was a cohort study in South Koreans where they took about 4,000 people with chronic kidney disease and they followed them from 2001 until 2019. And they stratified them into various intakes of protein. So there was uh, five different groups. They called it Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and Q5. And basically it started from less than 0.6 grams per kilogram of body weight protein intake all the way up to above 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight intake. And they also attempted to control for various co-founders like BMI, exercise, smoking, alcohol intake, and quite a few other things. Now, what did they find? Well, what they found was there was actually no association between the level of protein intake and mortality in people with chronic kidney disease. And interestingly, they expressed some of their data as what was called a warranty period. I don't know about you, but the warranty periods I'm used to are on the stuff I buy. So I wasn't actually familiar with this term, so I looked it up. My understanding of warranty period is it is the number of years where it's predicted that less than 1% of people will die in that group. So for example, if you had a warranty period of two years, that means that based on the data, that group will have less than 1% of them die over a two year period. So basically, the higher the warranty period, the better it is for mortality. So interestingly, there was actually like some fluctuations, but the highest protein intake or the highest quintile protein intake had double the warranty period of the lowest. So it was 3.3 warranty years versus like 1.6. And that was pretty consistent whether they expressed it as grams per kilogram or as a percentage of energy. And in fact, when they did a kind of regression analysis, there was a slight trend for higher protein intakes to reduce mortality. But when they directly compared them, it was not a statistically significant difference. What does this mean? Does this mean if you have chronic kidney disease, you should go out and be on a high protein diet? 
Well, not necessarily. Keep in mind, we're comparing low protein intakes of like 0.6 grams per kilogram of body weight versus kind of moderate protein intakes of 1.2 grams per kilograms of body weight. So we can't forecast that like going to 1.6 or 2.0 or 2.4 would have the same effects. Maybe there's a, it could be like a J-shaped curve, that sort of thing. So we don't know about high intakes. What are some of the confounders in this? Well, they attempted to control for a lot of confounders but you can't really control for everything. One interesting point they brought up that I actually agree with is that if you're attempting to reduce protein, most people aren't just gonna reduce protein and not replace it with something. They're gonna replace it with carbohydrate or fat. So if these folks increase their carbohydrate and fat consumption compared to protein, that might have had negative health outcomes, especially if they were tending to overconsume calories when they added in carbohydrate and fat. As we talk about, protein tends to be more satiating than carbohydrate or fat. Another question is, well, why do they see these outcomes where other studies have shown something different? One important thing to point out is that Asian protein intakes tend to be a little bit more from fish and plant-based proteins than they are from like highly processed meats and whatnot as is the case in Western society. It may suggest, and again, I'm going out on a limb here, and you guys know me, I'm not like a processed food is gonna kill you sort of person, but it may suggest that there could be something to the types of proteins that this cohort is consuming that may be more beneficial for kidney disease. So one interesting point the authors brought up is that people with chronic kidney disease actually end up dying more from cardiovascular disease than they do from kidney failure. So again, the idea that if they were reducing protein and replacing it with carbohydrate or fat, that may be a connection there. Now, it's tenuous and it's just speculation, but that's kind of what we're doing is speculating about these results. So I'm not saying that's why we saw those results, but it's a possibility. And finally, one other thing to consider is that when you have any kind of like damage to a tissue, protein is actually involved in the repair of that tissue. And so it is possible, although we don't have direct evidence of this, that perhaps a certain amount of protein is necessary to help prevent even more decline in kidney function due to less recovery of the damaged tissue. Again, I'm not saying you should go out and eat a high protein diet if you have kidney failure. What this seems to suggest is one, it doesn't appear that protein restriction down to low levels is gonna provide you any additional benefit and it may actually be a harm. And two, maybe switching your protein sources to something more like fish or unprocessed sources of protein might be beneficial in the context of chronic kidney disease. But one thing we can say with relative confidence is if you have healthy kidneys, you do not have to concern yourself with protein intake up to you know three grams per kilogram of body weight. There just is no evidence that that harms a healthy kidney. All right guys, if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next week.